Thank you very much. Today's, <clears throat> today's news about the federal government bailing out Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is just the latest installment in the excessive greed and concentrated power of giant corporations that are destabilizing our economy, discharging hundreds of thousands of workers, and then running to Washington to be bailed out by the American taxpayer. I think there needs to be a taxpayer revolt in this country that's very organized and that says to giant corporations, if you believe you're capitalists, then you succeed and fail on your own two feet. And don't engage in mismanagement, corruption, or excessive speculation where you desperately run to Washington and we the taxpayers have to bail you out. This is not capitalism. This is corporate socialism. <clears throat> the bailouts uh, by Washington uh, of the Wall Street crooks some weeks ago, the contemporary bailout of the two uh, largest uh, financial corporations in America, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and the forthcoming bailout in a few days of the totally mismanaged uh, auto companies in Michigan illustrate that there is a massive transfer of risk from these mismanaged and casino type corporations onto the backs of taxpayers today and our children and grandchildren as taxpayers tomorrow. The presidential campaign of Nader Gonzalez is going to make this an upfront issue. Uh, the two major candidates are going along like toadies issuing one paragraph press releases rubber stamping one federal bailout uh, after another of these giant mismanaged corporations whose CEOs when they do finally depart depart on a floating ocean of tens of millions of dollars of personal compensation. This is a disrespect and a disregard and a ravaging of hard-pressed American taxpayers who should not have to bail out uh, corporate giants. Our campaign also wants to bring the social benefits in our country up to the level of Western Europe, which has had them for 40 to 55 years. Namely, full Medicare for everybody with free choice of doctor and hospital and private delivery of health care. Second, a living wage restoring the wages of minimum wage workers to the level adjusted for inflation of what it was in 1968. That would make it $10 an hour today. Instead, the recent increase in the federal minimum wage in July took it to a measly $6.55 an hour. Third, a major crackdown to either prevent or prosecute corporate crime, fraud, and abuse. The mass media has reported again and again the corporate crime wave the ripoff of consumers, the stealing from investors, the depletion of, of pension funds uh, from Enron uh, to Wall Street. Yet nothing is done about it in Washington uh, other than the two parties dialing for the same corporate dollars from the same corporate crooks. We want a law and order campaign against these corporate capitalists where they are uh, expected uh, to obey uh, common rules of decency and not exploit their workers and their consumers and then be bailed out by the taxpayers when their greed uh, becomes too extreme. We want a, 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 a six-month negotiated withdrawal of all U.S. military and corporate forces from Iraq with U.N.-sponsored elections in that interim, continued humanitarian aid uh, for the Iraqis whose country we have so significantly destroyed. We also want the U.S. government to reverse course and instead of supporting the, the militaristic approach to dominating, brutalizing, occupying, and colonizing the Palestinian people in their remaining territories. Instead, the U.S. government should support the Israeli and Palestinian peace movements which years ago worked out a two-state solution between themselves. You can't settle that conflict if the U.S. government and U.S. taxpayers are supporting unquestionably the hardliners in the Israeli government. We have to support a majority of the Israeli people and Palestinian people who in polls have showed they are willing to settle this conflict for a two-state solution, namely a return to the 1967 borders. 
We also uh, support a massive solar energy conversion in this country uh, in conjunction with a massive energy efficiency uh, standards upgrades for motor vehicles, appliances, heating, lighting, and, and other uh, <coughs> energy systems. In this way, we will accelerate the replacement of fossil fuels and nuclear power, help save the environment locally and globally, encourage more small businesses uh, to work in, this, in the solar en energy area, and establish energy independence, which will reduce the likelihood of future geopolitical conflicts. And finally, uh, you can get more detail on our agenda on votenator.org. But finally, <coughs> finally, we want to open up the presidential debates. What are we doing in this country rationing debates? We don't ration weather forecasts. We don't ration entertainment. We don't ration sports. The Debate Commission is nothing more than a private corporation created and controlled 21 years ago by the Republican Democratic parties to get rid of the League of Women Voters sponsorship, which they thought was too independent. And what we need uh, are companies like Google and Yahoo and coalition of veteran, labor, neighborhood, consumer, environmental groups uh, to, uh, to sponsor their own debates. Sponsor them in ways uh, that represent millions of people's interests and diverse voices on that, on that debate stage. And sponsors them in a way where the two major candidates, John McCain and Barack Obama, cannot uh, say no. And if they do, on national television, their two chairs will be on the stage with their names on it, empty. Now, I say this because it's very, very uh, easy to do this. In any of the major swing states, like Ohio, or Michigan, or Pennsylvania, everybody knows that John McCain and Barack Obama are going to come to these states at least three to five times between now and November 4th. They're going to come to Columbus, they're going to come to Cleveland, they're going to come to Cincinnati, and a whole coalition of groups, let's start with trade unions, neighborhood groups, the Urban League, environmental groups, children's welfare groups, education groups, and veteran groups, all got together on a letterhead and basically said, we invite you to a major auditorium in our metropolitan area, and we're going to present you with our agenda, and we want you to react and, and respond to our agenda. In that way, the people begin taking control of the dynamics of presidential campaigns instead of being left with what they are left with now to be mere spectators. Thank you.